This past decade, crisis-affected communities across the world have grown fourfold. A quick internet research in 2023 alone shows humanitarian crisis affecting millions of people. 100 million people are on the run from conflict and disaster. 340 million people are projected to be in need of some sort of humanitarian crisis. The list is long, whether this may be the full invasion war in Ukraine or crises in Syria, Uganda, Nigeria, Afghanistan, Myanmar. It's a long list. And of course, the most recent in Turkey. And while at times this havoc may seem afar, we are really deeply fortunate that in Belmont itself, we have two residents who are committed to helping, especially the case of, in, of Ukraine, in bringing relief to these communities. Joining me today are Jennifer Hill, Executive Director and President of Refugee Protection International, and Irina Piotrowski, uh, a Belmont resident as well. Welcome, both of you. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, I'll start with you, Jennifer. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, you know, I was looking at your website, and it looks like you've been involved in humanitarian efforts for many, 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 many years before you even started RPI in 2015. So can you share with us a little bit about your journey? How did you get involved in these efforts? And then what prompted you to start Refugee Protection International? Absolutely. Thank you. I've um, been humbled to be on the ground with victims of war probably since you know, 2001 when I was first interning with the United Nations at the time. And seeing you know, across Kosovo and Sudan with the Darfur crisis uh, and then also on to Chechnya and other places like that, just what these people go through, I decided it would be fantastic to supplement the work of other amazing organizations out there and to start something, which we did in late 2015 at the height of the Syrian war, to both support grassroots efforts on the ground and also to directly deliver aid where needed. And uh, we are very happy to be here today. We're going to discuss both the terrible situation in Ukraine, um, but also some of our ongoing relief efforts for earthquake victims. And our heart goes out to them. Um, they've survived so much already with the war and also Turkey taking in so many refugees there. Um, and we are currently supporting relief efforts for both Turkish and Syrian survivors. Thank you, Jennifer. And, and can you tell us a little bit more about RPI? I believe you work pretty closely with the grassroots communities in the region. Can you tell us how that works and what has that experience been like? Absolutely. So we believe that you know, um, grassroots organizations are often best able to reach people in need, mm -hmm. especially internally displaced people and other conflict-affected persons, uh, but that they also have you know, existing expertise that uh, can be put to use if they're supported with fundraising mm -hmm. and um, outreach to others. So we have been working with about eight to ten different Turkish, Syrian, and Lebanese um, organizations in the Middle East since late 2015. Mm -hmm. And together we've reached um, about half a million civilians, supporting them with medical aid, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of emergency shelter support, especially inside northwest Syria, mm -hmm. and also education and protection issues and self-reliance. Mm -hmm. um, and then we complement that. Uh, we, for example, a few years ago we co-designed a project on refugee self-reliance that brings um, refugee-made products um, here to the United States mm -hmm. where we sell them both at craft fairs, holiday events, mm -hmm. uh, and also in person mm -hmm. uh, through, um, through shops uh, such as Carol's Chic Boutique, mm -hmm. which has been amazing. Now that um, effort then goes to support the women who are in these programs being trained on the ground by our partners. Mm -hmm. So we, we both support the training financially, thanks to our donors, but then we also sell the goods so it's humanitarian cash for work for these um, oftentimes single mm -hmm. mothers taking care of children in the camps. Mm -hmm. And part of that proceeds also supports schools in the refugee camps. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there are always more that can be done. Uh, you know, there's always more money that can impact your relief efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, and February 23rd this, this year will mark a full one year of full war, a full scale invasion and war in, in Ukraine. And uh, with us, we have Irina, a Belmont resident who grew up in Ukraine uh, and is also organizing, along with RPI, a concert that's going to bring, raise some money. Uh, Irina, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your background, and, and uh, a little bit about what you know, what's happening in Ukraine, how your family might be affected. 
Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, so I grew up in Ukraine. I'm half Polish, half Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to live in different countries. Um, always felt like a messenger about Ukraine because I was always feeling that people don't know much about Ukrainian culture. Uh, and now with this full-scale war, actually the war in Ukraine started back in 2014. It just wasn't said much on media, unfortunately. And on 24th of February, the full-scale war started. Mm -hmm. And of course, I was terrified and scared for my family because uh, every city was bombed, my city, Lutsk included. Uh, there was like an airport uh, was destroyed, um, nuclear plants, like electricity plants next to my city. And so my family was very scared, but it was very hard to <laughs> influence them to leave because yeah. they needed to make uh, like a hard decisions either to stay or go. Um, like my brother-in-law, he volunteered to go to the army. The same my dad, who is a bit older person. Um, so he's actually in, um, like, I don't know yeah, how you call it, like, uh, this a backup military. Mm. And my brother-in-law was sent to the front line now, so he's in branches and he called my sister today and you were able to hear um, bombs and shelling. Mm -hmm. So we are all very scared mm -hmm. for his life. But you know, like, it's like, what else you will do? This is our country, this is our home. The same with my family, so they decided to stay and they live with sirens and with all the risks. But why we will leave? It's our, you know, our home, so this has just been difficult. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry for what you're going through. Um, it's, it's very brave of you, Irina, to come here today and share this. I, I can't even imagine. Um, as I said, you know, we see it all on the news and it seems afar, but it, it's very much close to home, too. Um, I know you are also organizing a concert to raise uh, money to bring relief efforts. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about the concert? I believe it's on March 3rd. Yes, on that. March 3rd, uh, with uh, Jennifer, we're organizing a um, Ukrainian charity concert to support Ukrainian children. I was fortunate enough that I met some amazing uh, Ukrainian performers, like one of them, Olga Abokumova. Uh, she's opera singer uh, mm -hmm. from Ukraine. She fled the war with her child. Her relatives live here. And another musician uh, is Bandura player. So Bandura is a folk instrument in mm. Ukraine. Mm. So I would like, like through these performances also to educate and show people more about Ukrainian culture, diversity of Ukrainian culture, mm -hmm. and also, um, yeah, it's like a small contribution, like something small that I can do. So I was very happy to meet Jennifer. Mm -hmm. uh, and also I was happy to see the beautiful space we have at Belmont mm -hmm. Town Hall. So we need to use this space. So this is like sure. a perfect occasion. And uh, where can they get tickets for this concert? Uh, so we have website and flyers around the town. Mm -hmm. um, www.refugeeprotection.org. You go to the events page and you can buy tickets there if you can't make it. Any donations support uh, two war-damaged children's hospitals in southern Ukraine that I'll be speaking about shortly. Thank you. And I, I know you and I were talking before uh, in, in the studio that you are wearing, this is a traditional... Vinochuk. What is it called? Vinochuk. Vinochuk? Mm -hmm. Yes. What, what is that? Is it like a hairband? It's part or? of the yeah, traditional clothing. Uh, like mm. It's for girls and women. It's actually it's, it has a kalina. Kalina is like a traditional uh, plant in the verba. So people say like without kalina and verba, there are no Ukraine. Mm -hmm. They're like symbols of Ukraine. Mm. And I also have korali. This is from my mom. Mm. It's like also like, like a coral. Oh. coral. Mm. <laughs> very beautiful, very pretty. Um, back to you, Jennifer, I would like to know uh, how do you think this concert might help in the efforts that you are putting in to bring relief in Ukraine? What are some dire current needs and what might be your appeal to Belmont residents in general or any specific way people can help? Yeah, thank you, Chanel. I think for us, you know, keeping conflicts in the news and the humanitarian needs in the news is very, it's just critical and, mm. and showing empathy with people on the ground and supporting in any way we can. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, since March of last year, when um, a key children's and maternity ward in Mariupol was attacked and destroyed, Refugee Protection International has been committed to protecting children and the unborn in any way we can in Ukraine. And so this means that our staff and volunteers in Romania go in and purchase medical equipment and supplies and transport them across the border into Ukraine. Uh, I've visited five of the six Ukrainian hospitals that we have been supporting in this way um, so in the past year. And one of the two of those actually um, I visited last month in January. Mm -hmm. And so we drove in um, on January 25th across the border from Romania, uh, went up to Mykolaiv, and then as we were coming into Kherson, we understood that there was kind of um, a response about the Biden administration having decided to send in tanks to support Ukraine. And so uh, the, the Russians were kind of sending quite a few missiles over to Ukraine. I believe it was around 55 missiles that day. And we were told to be very careful, but all I can think of is you know, the people who are there every single day and don't get to come in and out and who continue to serve their own communities. Mm. Um, so we went directly to um, two children's hospitals. One was a maternity hospital that had been shelled two days before we arrived. Mm -hmm. And as we toured uh, the floor where the newborns used to live, it was, it was a big struggle emotionally, to be honest, because, um, you know, as, as people were sharing with us, the Russians had been occupying uh, Kherson just a few months prior, and so uh, the directors of the hospitals and the, and the medical workers said they know we're here, they know we're serving children and newborns and mothers in labor, and yet they continuously have been hitting um, maternity hospitals and children's hospitals. Uh, then we went to the bomb shelter of that hospital um, and discussed how we can help them, what equipment they need, what supplies to be able to continue uh, the most urgent work on, uh, in the bomb shelter. I, I w would, uh, it sounds, uh, it kind of sounds really dreary and I'm, I, you, when was it you were last in Ukraine? So that was January 26th. Uh, so just about a, two, three weeks back. Right. Uh, I can only imagine that beyond even medical needs that there mm. must be people in mental crises or emotional support that they might be needing and while you know there is definitely need for survival of the physical body uh, what if at all work is being done to provide them with Absolutely. the mental I mean it's it's an unbelievable Absolutely. grit you need to be in that kind of a situation right right I think during our last interview with um, Belmont Journal, we discussed having visited the Zaporizhia Regional Children's Clinical Hospital in southeast Ukraine. Um, that hospital was front and center in the news early on in the war because they were receiving uh, young girls with amputated limbs and major traumatic war injuries from Mariupol and Berdyansk, um, mm -hmm. who then were being further treated at their mm -hmm. hospital. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually purchased and sent in $40,000 worth of wound vacuum therapy equipment um, from Germany through Romania mm -hmm. very early on back in mm -hmm. April. Uh, and when I visited that hospital in May, um, we could hear explosions outside and such. But to see some of their psychosocial staff and psychiatrists uh, actually doing telehealth as I was there was amazing. Um, it speaks to kind of the ingenuity of how to treat people and support them during wartime. Of course, here in, in the U.S. we've done telehealth for quite a while, sure. but in some of those areas it's quite new. Mm. And so there are, you know, people who are either still in some of the occupied territories, mm. these are children or youth that had been previously coming up to Zaporizhia City to get mental health support, um, were now being given um, support by, um, by mobile phone. Uh, and then there were, you know, children there who were speaking to me about their experiences. It was so absolutely psychosocial support and mental mm -hmm. health um, has to be supported, and mm -hmm. um, we're eager to do that, more of that. And I believe uh, RPI is also helping uh, efforts, relief efforts in Turkey and Syria with the recent earthquake. Do you want to share yes. a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. So building on about now eight years of working with many of these Turkish Syrian community partner organizations, uh, as soon as the earthquake hit, that same night we were up all night on WhatsApp discussing what is the most urgent needs, how can we get support there. And um, you know, in contrast to Ukraine, where RPI staff and volunteers have gone directly in many times, including myself, to bring in aid, 
uh, in Syria and Turkey, we feel that our partners are highly, you know, they're highly capable in Ukraine as mm -hmm. well, don't get me wrong, but we just already have existing partners in Turkey and Syria. So we're really trying to kind of move to support their efforts on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and that means financially, uh, because sometimes bringing in things, shipping them in, you know, the containers, it costs money to receive the sure. containers, to unload them, to transport the materials. There was only one border crossing from um, Turkey into, into northwest Syria. Now it's been open to three in that region. Um, but we're basically supporting the provision of emergency uh, shelter, mm -hmm. heating supplies, which we had done annually every winter with our partners on the ground. Um, and also then uh, supporting three primary health care centers in northwest mm -hmm. Syria and also their um, mobile teams that go out and do malnutrition screening and, and treatment. Mm -hmm. And then in Antakya, Gaziantep, and other earthquake-affected areas mm -hmm. on the Turkish side, we're also um, supporting food aid provision, um, blankets, and other such relief. How, how big is your organization, Jennifer? So it looks like there's <laughs> a tremendous work that's being done. So how, who's bearing all this load and helping you do this work? Well, thank you. And we if at all, a... what might you want to ask Belmont citizens and residents to help you in some way? Of course, thanks. We have a board of directors of five mm -hmm. um, members, an advisory board, and then also about 12 volunteers here and also in Romania. We, and then we have three Ukrainian charity partner organizations that I also visited in Odessa last month mm -hmm. uh, and other places, Zaporizhia, Kyiv. And we focus as well on orphans who are displaced, um, children with disabilities, and, and evacuations from the frontline areas. Uh, and so all of this, what, what we could really use right now is just more financial support. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I feel it's very difficult to ask for that, <laughs> but uh, the timing is everything. So mm -hmm. if we hadn't supported the evacuation of 2,000 civilians very mm -hmm. early on from Her Herson Mikolaev, mm -hmm. um, they might not have survived. Uh, we're glad that our partners on the ground were brave enough to be doing the evacuation runs. Um, we purchased the, the mini buses in Romania and brought them in, mm -hmm. and they are being used for those evacuation runs. But, um, you know, for example, we also need more money to, to buy more medical equipment for the two hospitals mm -hmm. I visited. One of mm -hmm. them, when we delivered uh, neonatal and surgical equipment to it last, um, mm -hmm. last month, that was only a fraction of what they need because two of their intensive care units and their neonatal ward were heavily damaged um, mm -hmm. on New Year's Day mm -hmm. by, um, by Russian shelling and attacks. So you, it's primarily uh, monetary help or also supplies? So we have been uh, receiving supplies gratefully from the Belmont community and wider community and shipping those over to mm -hmm. Ukraine, mm -hmm. clothing, hygiene items, winter blankets and such. Um, but for, for our purposes right now, we feel that the, getting the urgent medical care there and mm -hmm. continued support uh, is critical, but we will continue to solicit supplies, absolutely. And Irina, I know, has been reaching out to her community on the ground as well um, to and, see what's needed. And the needed. best way for them to help either monetarily or supplies or wanting to volunteer is just going to your website and connecting with you. Absolutely, and okay. and coming to our, our um, concert. Chair, yes, of the course. concert yes. on March third. Uh, it's and mm -hmm. making sure that the hall is complete, the auditorium is full, and yes. that we can raise money. Mm -hmm. um, Irina, I wanted to uh, also talk a little bit about the 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 beauty of Ukraine, since it's so much in discussion today. Ukraine, you know, there is full in scale invasion and war, but it's also a country that's known for uh, singing and. Mm -hmm. Dancing. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, Ukrainian culture that people may not know much about and, you know, like our parting thoughts for Belmont folks to know a little bit about this country? Um, yes, yeah, so I also grew up in singing family, so I don't know, I feel like all Ukrainians like to sing. Um, <laughs> so we will all be able to see it at the concert on March 3rd uh, nice. in Belmont Town Hall. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, I'm discussing the program with opera singers, so mm -hmm. like we will be focusing first on like a Ukrainian traditional song, so you can learn more about mm -hmm. the culture, and also uh, we are, will be also like singing something in Italian and Spanish as well, mm -hmm. as some like um, well-known uh, pieces. Um, more about Ukrainian culture, so we have um, beautiful like literature, poets. Uh, mm, I know the place where I grew up, it's like uh, with woods and lakes, a little bit similar to Massachusetts, mm -hmm. uh, nature-wise. Um, 
Also at the event, we actually will be selling Ukrainian cakes. Oh, wonderful. Uh, we are cooperating with Ukrainian bakery that was mm -hmm. just opened in November in Brighton. So they are coming and you will That's be great. able to taste some mm -hmm. Ukrainian traditional cakes. Mm -hmm. Um, also, I know Jennifer brought some pottery art from Ukraine, mm -hmm. so we'll be able to sell. And also we had some support from local businesses, so we or will be organizing like a raffle. Mm -hmm. So you can win uh, like a gift certificate to craft beers or dinner in Ilka Sale. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this will be fun. Do you, do you have a goal of a certain amount for that day, so that at least we make sure that we can try to meet that, if not exceed that? You know, we are just happy. Oh, yeah, we are just happy that. people come and, and, okay. and are there. Uh, last year, we tripled our annual budget, and we expect to do more than that this year. Um, mm. Unfortunately, we wish the reasons were better, um, but that is how it is. And to touch um, on what Irina mentioned about the pottery, uh, on my way back from Kherson and then through Odessa, we stopped at a partner organization there called mm -hmm. The Way Home. And they serve a highly vulnerable women and children throughout the region, including people displaced to Odessa. Mm -hmm. uh, so we collected a lot of the pottery that's been made by children in mm. art therapy classes. Oh, wow. And this beautiful pottery uh, not only touches the soul, but when we sell it, uh, it'll support their families mm -hmm. and also help us to expand this type of pottery training mm -hmm. to single mothers who've been displaced so that they mm -hmm. can care for their children as well. Mm -hmm. uh, because the inflation in Ukraine right now is extraordinary, so it's been very difficult for people to, to buy the basic supplies they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also maybe to add to this, I'm finalizing the Amazon list for the page. Uh, so actually now like the main needs in some very affected territories is the water, mm. access to water, to, mm. to have like a good water filters and mm -hmm. first aid kits. This mm. is like uh, the priority at the moment. Mm. You want to I, add something? I, I just wanted to also yes, acknowledge them, some of the, the incredible Ukrainian partner organizations that we work with in Ukraine. Um, and those include Happy Child Foundation in Zaporizhia City. Um, they've taken care of pediatric cancer patients with local hospitals for years, among other things. Um, also, The Way Home in Odessa and uh, Bright Kids Charity in Kyiv, uh, which we supported to provide cash assistance to families providing home care to children with disabilities. And then, <laughs> last but not no, least, please, I, I really owe a very big, um, humble thank you to American Securities Foundation. Mm. Uh, without their amazing seed funding, um, our Ukraine relief efforts wouldn't have touched as many lives as they did. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Well, thank you to both of you for taking the time and joining us uh, in studio today. Um, uh, deeply moved by your work and uh, we all will try our best to spread the word and make sure March 3rd is a, is a big success and any other way people can help, we'll be directing them to your website. Deeply appreciated. This is Thank your host, you. Shonul Malik, uh, joining me today. In today's Belmont Journal segment was Jennifer Hill from Re Refugee Protection International and Irina Piotrowski, a uh, Belmont resident. Please make sure you attend the concert on March 3rd in Belmont Town Hall and signing off today in today's news journal. Thank you.